everybody I'm back with another video and sorry I missed out on yesterday I was a little bit busy with travel so before we start please subscribe and like this video it helps me keep the channel growing and it's been going at a good pace I really appreciate all you um, but so right for this video the topic will be pinning players and positioning between the lines and basically variations what you need to know and a little information about each position in relation to the defensive block. So let's get right into it. As we see, the blue team is in possession, and I'll just highlight their asymmetric shape at the moment. I highlighted their shape in blue. So they just have a bit of asymmetry, and to be honest, their positioning is a bit narrow, so I can adjust that so it's a little more realistic. So we have both our attacking midfielders, our 8 and our 10, in the half spaces. And so now let's look on this ball side structure first. So one thing to notice is the positioning of the 8 and his height in relation to the defensive block. So he is a bit deeper than his opposite number 10. So what this will do is, as you'll notice, He's positioned closer to the midfield line, so the space is in behind him. So this would facilitate a turn. And if the ball was able to be played through here, maybe a bounce pass was played to move the horizontal compactness of the defensive line, the ball was played into him, the space would be behind him facilitating a turn and allowing him to take advantage of the space he created for himself just by his vertical positioning. So here we are again. So note, little note one, positioning to closer to the midfield line elicits more of a turning action and more space in behind further up the field. So this is for maybe more of an individual tactic in terms of breaking the midfield line or the line of pressure that you're dealing with at the moment. And then on the far side, we have a much different, a much different uh, tactic or concept, and this is positioned higher up the field. Now this positioning is more closer to the defensive line, higher up the field. And now what, where we'll see the space is in front of the player. So here it is. Here's the space. And now what this will do is this will facilitate more of a third man concept because the space, there is no space in behind for, to turn as these defenders will, one of them will, the defensive line may shift to accommodate this player's positioning in offense. So now the space is in front of him to take advantage of. So, and we'll have a quick look. So we'll say the player in possession, the center back drives forward to progress and maybe attract a little pressure to even grow this space in front of the offensive player even further. I'll highlight it. So now there's the space to be taken advantage of. And now the ball can be played. And as this happens, he'll most likely collapse the defense somehow, shift over. And now the space will be there for the third man concept, which can be taken advantage of by the wide structure and the deeper player. And what this is really good for is, one, it involves more passes and diagonal passing options. So it will ask more questions of the defense and they'll test their defensive shifting and um, things of that sort. Whereas the first action we saw from the eight, that turning motion will ask more questions of like an immediate break of pressure and involve more pinning of players and the space that will come after the initial progression. Whereas this, gets the momentum, a dynamic advantage going forward to attack the line and focus more on uh, more of a numerical superiority at times. So for that to be clear, 
just wanted to make those notes. And now we can talk about how these players are influenced by pinning and their positioning and how that affects the defensive structure. So I'll just reset the players. And uh, just to show this concept, I have made the defense a little flat um, just to show the spaces and really exaggerate what spaces will be there. So then now, the there's three main positions between the lines. There are obviously more, but really clearly can show three just really easily um, when talking about positioning between the players, obviously. You can players can position themselves closer to one area or more narrow in the half space or wider in the half space. But if we're just talking about positioning between the lines and in relation to height and playing between players and really pinning multiple players at a time, there's three spaces where you can do this. And obviously there are many more, but three simple ways to do it and pretty easy to understand, pretty self-explanatory. I'll go through that right now. So the first is, as we saw on this side, um, to create asymmetry in the midfield, you can position yourself between or closer to the midfield line. And what this does is it pins these two players. And the goal of this is to narrow them. Usually it is to narrow them. And this allows for wide progression or more space out wide. And when you pin players, you really try and create lose-lose situations for the defense. So the lose-lose situation would be, one, they're narrow, blocking the half space, but then it creates wide progression. Or if they don't become narrow, then it creates more space in behind for the turn, as we saw earlier. So the next position, I'll flatten the defense a little bit just to show you. So it is very clear. So the other position is when you're directly between four players, almost in this square. And what this does is it asks questions of four different players. So this is a, a bit more taxing on the defense because it involves four players communicating and it tests how well drilled the defensive team is in their principles. So if the ball is played and the players aren't shifting properly, like this would be properly, if they're not shifting properly or say they have a mi miscommunication somewhere, they don't shift to cover the player between the lines, miscommunication or something, then space can open up for this player to then be played in behind, or maybe they can just find the player in the half space. So um, testing more multiple players, and um, it's not as, as strong of a pin, if that makes sense, because he is influencing more players. So the more players you try and pin, the less effectively you'll hold them to their own positions because there are more players to accommodate that offensive player between the lines. So, but what this does is it allows this one player to then read the space and how it changes as the ball is circulated. And now the final position is closer to the defense. And much like the midfield, it can narrow the players, prevent the defense from jumping, um, if the half space were to be overloaded, so let's say an inverted fullback with the winger holding the width. So now there's two players, and now if they overload the half space, the back line won't be able to pin to press them. So if the ball is played in, they'll have more likely of a chance to turn, and then they'll have a numerical advantage as well as the pos positional advantage that comes with the attacking player pinning. So those are just the three basic vertical positioning heights that come about when you're playing between the lines. Just want to make a quick video to get back on task with posting every day or every other day and um, just give you a little um, value in a short video and something that can be easily applied 
and worked into a game model or offensive principles that you try to teach to your players. So if you liked the video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Really appreciate it.